Oh, hi everybody. How we doing? Uh, welcome to the program. It's uh, it's a Thursday, and uh, and welcome to Thursday. It's also a game day. Um, yeah, helmets on. Yeah, get your helmets on. Uh, get your glasses on, and fix your headphone strap and, get, and your get both your glasses. Sort of get get some, yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, all figured out. Uh, Red, how was your pre pre show poop? It was excellent. Oh, Thanks, Dean. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Handled it well. Yeah. Well veteran eh been at it for a lot of years yeah you know yeah they said he was good in the room i, I bet she's awesome in the bathroom i bet so good <laughs> so good in the bathroom that's uh i mean what's better than that just looking up a couple things anyway i hope it's not about me and my about your poop <laughs> show. i feel like you're more comfortable than dean in that room because he's always worried about snakes and crocodiles coming up he's a little antsy which yeah. is weird because well, now I, it's going to be in his car. Now he's going to be worried about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you know what, though? Bravery comes through because I, I spent a lot of time in there despite my fear really? of snakes and uh, critters coming up through the. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's the how you fans. get over those fears, apparently. You got to yeah. face them, right? Well, it's, it's you face that fear or you face your family. And that True. is less than dealing with the bullshit that a family. Yeah. Has. So it wasn't just me, right? Like that's a thing. Once oh, guys kind of get to their late thirties, oh 30s. yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to the washroom for an hour. Yeah, yeah. Are you still in there? Hanging yeah, out. yeah. Level ninety-seven of Candy Crush. This is what are you doing at, in there? At our house, in our root bathroom, there was a shelf, and or like a big Last wide, dance, eh? big wide. No, here. Okay. And I put a TV in there. So now my youngest goes and sits on the shitter and turns the tube on. And you, you're like, where is that kid? Oh, God. He's upstairs. hanging out. Yeah. Just hanging. Is, yeah. Which is great until you kind of need to get in there. You got, mm -hmm. you got to have, you got to have enough bathrooms to pull that kind of thing off. One That's of my crazy. guys, it's like, you may as well just block off. Like he's like a lawyer. It's like half hour blocks. It's like, if we're getting anywhere and he goes in that room, you're like, no, we're late. God damn you. <laughs> like, you know, what is it? Uh, yeah, but quarter after we're already, we can't go now. We're going to miss the movie. We're damn it. It. Yeah. I just need to, I just got to go for a quick. Oh God. Anyway, um, a little behind the curtain there. Game day. Yeah. Game day, game day. There. That's we're just like normal people. Just like you. Yeah. Yeah, game days. You want to play light. You want to be on your toes. Nimble. So yeah. Uh, so it's the Flames on a game day against the Vegas Golden Knights. The hated Knights. They hate them. Bastard. Everyone hates them. The you be doing some right. People hating you this early in your existence. Like, can you imagine anyone hating the Kraken? Like, how could you even do it? And Ooh, Vegas, it's like, God damn these cheaters, bastards. But remember, yeah. everyone loved Vegas. Until they were new. There was a heartfelt, you know, attachment with the tragedy. And then they went to the cup final in year, year one. Of course they did. Yeah. All the kids wanted the Golden Knights jerseys, the misfits, all these cast offs from other teams doing great. What a beautiful story. I'm trying to find out where they got hated because you're right. Everyone Somewhere loved them at it some point. Flipped. And I almost wonder was it Mark Angelo? Was it Eichel? Mark was it saying goodbye? Hey, Mark Andre, you're out. Even Nate Schmidt, who was a big piece there that we kind of forget. They're just yeah. like, out you go. Petrangelo, Petrangelo coming in. Like it was this lack of loyalty to these like beloved core pieces and faces of the franchise. It was like, oh, yeah. this is, uh, they're pretty cutthroat down there. And somewhere Nate Schmidt is like, yeah, where's your loyalty? And they said, you know what? Where our loyalty used to sit, that's where we put our Stanley Cup ring. Right and, there on uh, that shelf. Where, where our, our, the loyalty... Uh, badge used to sit yeah. that's where the cup ring goes now you um you said somewhere it's winnipeg manitoba that nate's saying that also yeah, it was, a Van it was vancouver then winnipeg yeah it's Short that's it. <laughs> uh. now winnipeg having a great year winnipeg hey, higher in the standings oh, in vegas oh, but, yeah. um, so good year. and spring is just around the corner so it's Winnipeg. Get nice. Yeah, you're what? Two months out from spring? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the groundhog came out only six more months of winter. That's right. And, and it'll warm up for about nine minutes. Two the weeks of finals, summer. They will have fall. spring, <laughs> the spring right. atmosphere. There will be a street festival if they can yeah. make it. The they will have a street festival. Yeah, pie. what are they? Don't they like cook up the mosquitoes? It's mosquito fest. Oh, Pickerel. Yeah. Pickerel fest. Pickerel and mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you saute them up together in some butter. <sighs> or when it's good eating. That is good eating. But yeah, they're hated. Everyone hates them. 
How do they keep doing this? Kelly Michael McCurdle was asked at the through, press conference, right? do you, how do you, do you go for every good player? What, how are you involved in all of these sorts of things? And I bet just knowing Kelly a little bit over the years, knowing Kelly, I bet he's losing sleep at night. Yeah. Like people think he's cutthroat. Kelly. But what about my reputation? But guys, uh, can we not just get together for some drinks at the GM's meetings and I have, would, a, have a yuck? I would trade this ring right here just to be liked by my peers more. <laughs> in hindsight, if I knew that my in my friendships inside the game and my reputation among fans was going to take such a beating, I I would sacrifice it all if I could only go back in time. Yeah. Another, uh, if you go through and look at their draft history and how many picks they've retained, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Vegas Golden Knights use their picks as currency, no question. And sometimes they'll even use them in the draft players, but shortly thereafter, they uh, they tend to hit the road. They have spent an amazing amount of draft capital yeah. to bring in current rostered NHL players and even superstars. Is everyone else missing out? Is, 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 are we slow on this? Is this how I, it sh should be done? You, I, you wonder how much, you know, there's always speculation about how much ownership in Calgary is involved. And, there, and my take is there's ownership involved in every team. You yep. don't get to run teams without an owner. So good luck with that. I do wonder what the ownership mandate is. You know, I think it goes hand in hand with what McCrimmon is trying to do. So I think it's a it's a nice combination. But I I, I wonder how much help he gets in in taking this team in certain directions and spending money and and yeah, not even manip it, yeah, manipulating how things are done. Well, and the, the other thing uh, when you talk about turning heel, to use that wrestling term, the the usage of LTIR is definitely one of the things that put the black hat on them that whether it was Mark Stone or Eichel comes in and then game one of the playoffs, they they're look, they're healthy. They come back to life, back from the dead, like undertaker again, wrestling, uh, sitting up in the casket and he's good to go. I think that has rubbed people the wrong way, but if you were a GM and like you said, if you had the backing of ownership and you had all them, you spend to the cap, spend over the cap, win at all costs. We're all in. And this was a tool at your disposal. Would you be, you'd be foolish not to do it. Correct. It's kind of like the offer sheet thing. It's like, fellas, come on now. Like, you know, this could help you make your team better. Use the damn tool. Yeah, but they that's don't. how they strike next. They're going to do an offer sheet. That is the next thing. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the perfect, like we already invented the, yeah, we'll trade you this pick unless we trade it somewhere else first or after, I guess like that's, that's brand new. And now they're going to bring the offer sheet back in vogue. I love it. Everyone needs the, the bad guy, the villain. Yeah, they they are the bad guy. But when you when you think about it, if you had the and I, I guess we're not saying that Mark Stone's not injured, and not to suggest that Jack Eichel wasn't ready to play, or you go to Tampa Bay that uh, uh, Kucherov wasn't. Kucherov wasn't injured. You had there has to be something to it, right? And if you want to try and go into the playoffs, you want to go through the stretch without one of your stars. Because chances are, if it's a big tick to get that kind of money, nine million, eight million, ten yeah, million on the LTR, it's player. probably a good player. So if you want to be without them and fight for your playoff spot, then that, that's the flip side of it. It it may not always work. It doesn't always work. No, and there's legit injuries in there as well. Look, let's say a guy's ready to come back April two, has missed four months. Could you not argue that an extra two weeks of ramping up and getting your conditioning ready wouldn't be better in the long run? I mean. We're really splitting hairs here on some of these medical things. Well, and, and if I were the GM, I would argue that for sure. I would. Yeah. Well, and he's been out for a long time. We're just going to get him up. Playoffs. I said it, I think last week, you're not going to have a doctor anywhere. If you've been injured, you're not going to have a doctor anywhere. Say you're ready to play. You have to play nowhere. No way. If you go in there and say, I still have an ache. Yeah. <laughs> they cannot say you should play. Because I'm hurting. No, you're not. Uh, no, right? I'm going to go out there and every dime you make for the rest of your life will be <laughs> mine. Like, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. We only mention these 
you know, LTIR things with the teams that win. It happens every single year and lots of teams don't win the cup and no one ever mentions it. Like how many million were the Oilers over last year? Nobody knows because they didn't win anything. No one cares. When the team wins the cup, all of a sudden we care. So it's just, oh, we got to find a way to complain about someone else winning. That's what it is. If, if, if the Tampa Bay Lightning flame out the Kucherov year, no one's talking about LTIR manipulation. It's like the other podcasts. They're just jealous of us. We're winning. It? So much winning. We're just winning. Look at Dean. If that, if that isn't a winner right there, yeah. I don't know what I'm looking at. Winning at life. In that, man. Yeah. Profession, my professional life, personal yeah. life. Yeah. Just straight W's across the board. Look dude. who you get to hang out with every day. Yeah, look and at this. At the, look. at the ball games, they yes. put K's down for the strikeouts. Dean's, yeah. Every day he puts a W down on the Just calendar. Stacking yeah. W's. Win. 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 Oh, my God. Or one of those, yeah. Uh, word coming from the Dome. It mm. uh, it looks as though it'll be Dustin Wolf getting the start for the Flames tonight. Love it. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. That's it. why. That's why we're so big is yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, talking while you're talking right about faking injuries, I guess Markstrom isn't ready to go. Well, and Zeri as well. He must be a big faker as well. Because you know once the Flames get in the playoffs, LTIR, they're going to want to use right. cap space. <laughs> if only Connie had known that he'd have this LTIR space to use. Jeez. Yeah. Well, and, the thing with, and the other thing that Vegas has is a kind of a desirable destination. Oh, yeah. So guys sign there and stay. They're like, okay to sign there, tax-free, warmer climate. Go to the yeah, there's new just, rink, billionaire owner. To be fair, every team has a billionaire owner, and good point. Most have new rinks, but it's the winning part. Some right? are more involved than others, like, though. Like Florida was a, has always been tax free, and the Panthers were straight shit for a decade. They were missing the winning piece, and so on the other side of the state, Tampa, in the exact same tax environment, dominance. So they finally, you know, winning big piece. That is, uh, and we don't get paid to talk about ownership because they can do whatever the hell they want with it. But I think part of that had to do with ownership for a long time. If your owner sets a, the standard, makes a difference. I don't think the ownership would, like you look at Phoenix should be oh, God. one yeah. of the most desirable places to play in the league. Like, and all they've done is go from disaster owner to disaster owner to disaster owner. To and disaster are you telling owner. me if they didn't have a good owner there at some point, they wouldn't have had at least some level of success? I well, and a good owner, would. that's what, that is the, what you need to get a rink done. Like if you're going to get a rink done, that's a massive undertaking. You need someone that can build bridges in the community. These guys haven't even paid their bills in Glendale. They left. Now, I was going to say, in fairness, they had a decent rink. It was actually a very they, nice rink. Pay for it. They just decided not if to pay they the wanted, bills. If they wanted to slide that sucker down by uh, the right. bill. I think that I think speaks even it. more to the bad ownership because they did have a good <laughs> rink and they still couldn't make things work and they didn't even pay their bit. Like yeah. what a disaster. It needs to be, you know what? It's a it's a confluence of events. You need some ownership. You need some brains. You need to okay, nice nice rink, nice city, nice climate, tax free. A few things have to fall into place. Doesn't always, but yeah. you're right. If there's no winning, because no, if you were going to be a Florida Panther for a long time, you were not going there to win. You were taking the money. And There's been lots of expansion teams in really warm places that sucked so badly no one wanted to go near them. It was like, fuck, it's day 10 of free agency. Only Anaheim's calling. God damn it. Like Anaheim's not a good tax team. No, but I, I just mean like, oh, LA, it must be great. It's like, well, the team sucks. No. I, I go play for the Kings in a heartbeat. I'll never go to the Ducks. Like, that was the time. You do wonder if they don't go to the cup final in year one, if oh, the right. Petrangelo, because he was the first free agent, UFA to go in there, I'm in. Took big money, but there was big money in other cities. But he went there, and then things started. Not that he's a vet, a Norris guy necessarily, later. but they they got the biggest UFA of the summer. It changed year. their whole plan year one. They were going to sell James Neal and a bunch of these pending UFAs. Like I think Perron was there at the deadline, and it's like shit. We want to make the playoffs. We're keeping these guys, and so yeah. immediately, what was probably looked at is a couple years of like pump and dumps on ufas to get more assets it's like no we're in our window now like let's move to stage three go sign ufas trade for high profile players add 30 year olds that are great um 
this wasn't a slow build in Vegas for whatever reason. They just destroyed everyone in that expansion draft and that team was good. And maybe if you do it again, it doesn't go the same way, but all those circumstances and events led them to be really competitive in year one when no one thought they could. We're reading articles about the Vegas flu. All oh, the guys must be partying. They're like, no, they're just good. What? Um, I can't remember. Did they change the rules for when Seattle came in as far as? No, they kept Vegas rules. They was. Okay. They changed they for Vegas. Essentially before it was like, you could get a fourth liner and a third pair D and the new rules were what four defensemen or, you know, what eight skaters. So you had to expose a top four defenseman or you'd have to expose better forwards. Like it was a much more difficult set of rules for teams to expose guys under better for Vegas. Clearly. And at the same time, credit where it's due McCrimmon and uh, George McPhee have done a great job. Absolutely. Aiden Hill was brought in for a fourth round pick. I believe so. Yeah. Wins them the Stanley cup. Chandler Stevenson, peanuts. Chandler Stevenson has been a great golden knight. They got him for, for a couple of seconds or a second and something else. They have an ability to identify what player will work in. And, and they've even gone through different coaches. Remember mm -hmm. they, and that was part of it too. When they let uh, Gallant. Gerard Gallant go, they were kind of, roughed up over that one. Then they DeBoer the DeBoer and then they're DeBoer their third coach. It. Yeah. So they're on their third coach, but they have, they have a, a very strong ability to identify what kind of player is going to be a, a golden knight. Yep. And they've moved on from guys. Yeah. Bringing patch ready. Mm. Yep. And, you know, was, Robin Leonard was supposed to be the hero there, right? Yep. And that's how they got forced into the Logan Thompson, Aiden Hill universe. And it look, Every once in a while, a goalie hits late. They happen to be the team that had Aiden Hill when he popped. He tried and how do you traveled before then? And, and we talked a little bit about it yesterday about goaltenders and how do you how do you suss it out? How do you figure it out? Aiden Hill won his 17th game of the season against Seattle the other night. Career high. <laughs> you won more in the playoffs almost last year. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you look at this guy who's a third round pick in San Jose? Uh, we'll give you a fourth rounder for him. Stanley Cup champ. Yeah, and you probably weren't even trying to find a number one so much as a guy that could plug the hole. Just mm -hmm. like, let's bring in a, a guy that has some skills and we'll see if we can't work on the rough spots. Don't forget the rest of the team's good. Yeah, especially the way they defend, right? That's a good environment for goalies. Shea Theodore, uh, I mean... Expansion draft. Was a very good Anaheim Duck. And... Still, how many years has he been? He was one of the original misfits or whatever. He uh, he missed 35 games this uh, this season with injury. He has 30 points in 30 games. He's a point per game blue liner. Ouch, Anaheim. It's well, like and still, at the time, it made sense for Anaheim. They were winning the division and they had four defensemen. They couldn't keep them all, right? Like it was Vatnin, Lindholm, Fowler, and this young kid. And they're like, look, our window's now. It's not in three, four years. We're going to be old by then. We'll keep the vets, and I think they even turned it into a trade where we'll give you something to take Theodore so that you don't poach these other pieces. I mean, yeah. they hosed Columbus. They hosed Florida. They got Anaheim good. They really exerted leverage well. They somehow got a first with Marc-Andre Fleury, if I'm correct. Like, what are we talking about here? Incredible work, because William Carlson is still an impactful player. Four Jonathan Marcheseau leads them in scoring. Shea Theodore, as we mentioned, is – he is what he – they did a great job and it was either horseshit luck or they had a plan and carried it out to the T cup contender in the second wild card, by the way, flames fans know that that uh, first round series is important for the draft pick. And also easy to forget. They missed the playoffs two years ago. Mm -hmm. They were riddled with injuries and just could not, they tried, could not get there at the end of the day. Come back last season. Eichel is fully healthy. They go for Barbashev at the deadline. He's on a line with Marcia So and Eichel. And so, oh, there's some chemistry here. These guys are pretty good. And they were impressive all the way to the cup final. And, tonight, and they, uh, they'll be without Stone, Hurdle, Martinez, and Carrier today. Um, still heavily is, favored. Uh, yeah. What is the uh, time frame on, on Hurdle? He's on IR. Yeah. I mean, so I, it's not short. Martinez is day to day. I, 
I don't know if they need they didn't LTIR him. I don't believe to get cap space. Stone is till the end of the year. Yeah. So we we won't see this team at full throttle till the postseason. Yeah, they're 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 performing well now. They had coming into this game, Vegas had lost four in a row. Well, not coming into this game, but they'd lost four in a row right around the deadline. They lose the next one, and now they've got a pair of wins since Seattle in overtime. We saw the goal. I think you showed it right here yeah. with uh, with Eichel the other night. Tied it with an empty net in the last minute and then won it in overtime. Feeling good, are you? Yeah. And they have a lot of, even with those injuries, there are some guys that have been out. I mentioned Theodore. Eichel missed time. He missed 19 games. Uh, Theodore, 35 games. William Carlson missed 12. Now they're all back. So yeah, when they get Stone in the playoffs, conceivably, and whenever Hurdle comes back, that's a big push. But even right now, it's maybe as healthy as they've been all season, minus Mark Stone. Obviously, yeah, that's, that's a big, big minus. One. Well, but, and look, they they're they're either going to go face a division winner if they're a wild card, or they're going to have to go to Edmonton. Like we we really like this team, and they're going to, but like, there's no easy path for this group now. There's no home ice here, right? Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I don't. You I don't worry pass about Edmonton. Them. Is that what you're saying, or you don't yeah, care I, that they're I, going on the road? No, I I would if if they were facing Edmonton playoff start tonight, Edmonton yeah. home ice games seven games. Who are you taking? Yeah, I think it's almost a push. I think it's a really close series. I, yeah, I like too. Vegas's additions at the deadline. More, I need to know if Mark Stone's healthy, and that's not a guarantee at this point. If he is, like, eh, maybe it is Vegas. But yeah. but again, it's not like you're hey, we'll get Nashville in round one. Let's hand over that second rounder. Like it's very much that first round is going to be a war. The home team tonight is the Calgary Flames. Huh? They have lost three in a row and four of their last five. They'll go with uh, Dustin Wolf in net. Oh. How about Igor Sharangovich? How good has he been? You know, like, third line good, Dean. Real good. <laughs> yeah, third line good. He's been great at center. He did not have uh, a point in the loss against Colorado the other night, but still seven goals and nine points in his last seven games. Why don't you just flip Hunt and Pelche there? It's so easy. It's right there. Just it's it's a love affair. It's right there. Just it, looking at you. Just there's, flop them. There's a Hunt love affair that I'm not. Uh, Huska loves not Hunt. That is a fact. Sixty-five love affair. Uh, so there, there you have it. Cadre, Hubert Opospisil. So Magipani's back. Zeri is not. And you'll see Hanley out rather than in. Those are the changes. Roger? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Are we being smart asses about this a little bit? Like we're looking yeah, at Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. We're we kind are. of sitting here in silence going, hmm. What are you looking at? In fairness, this like, team has gotten throttled in three straight games. They have. Against three of the best in the league. They were not close to the Tampa's class of the NHL. Of the so and I guess you're not. They beat Tampa Bay. So. And I, yeah, I guess I'm being cheeky about Hunt. Yeah, he is what he is. Tampa. He's nearly 30. He's he's a fine player. He's, let's say he's scored some goals, I guess. He's whatever. Who are we talking about? Hunt. Oh, yeah. He's a fine he's fourth fine. line guy. I don't probably well, I think Hunt understand. would be a great piece on a good team. I sure was a couple of years ago with the Rangers. I think they I just, added. Uh, yeah, on this team. the deadline, but yeah, mm -hmm. he was a fourth liner most of the year with the Rangers. If you're a, if you're Craig Conroy, if you're Jerome Ginla retro, mm -hmm. what are you looking for here? I know what the, oh, guys that are trying to, uh, but who are you evaluating? The kids, are, are you really? Because you've played. Are you are you are you as interested in how Cadre and Huberto and Uyghur perform as maybe no. fans are or we are? No, I'm not. I'm. Uh, how did you word that question? Am I concerned about it? Yeah, I'm not. I, I guess I'm concerned if they pack it in. I don't care if they, but I'm not that concerned. The fear would be they shut it down, and now my concern. I guess. Well, then I guess I am concerned. I know, if they I, shut yeah. it down. Because if they shut it down, there it's going to trickle down, and it's going to be maybe not dissension, but that makes it real hard for a coach to 
push any buttons and pull any strings and maneuver anything if the leadership group decides to uh let's let's ride this out. All Husk has talked about since the three losses in the Rose process. You can't control all these other things, but you can control your process. Are you in the right spot? Are you working hard? You know, skate hard back to the bench. Like it's it's all just basics here. Um th this group isn't gonna be measured on wins and losses the rest of the way. I think what you guys are highlighting is that you want to avoid the greatest concern, which is veterans kicking this thing into neutral. Yes. And what about the coach? What is what, what, what is your message to this group when you're in practice at the end of practice before games in intermissions? I said it uh, yesterday. I said, I, I think that the, your instincts would tell you to push harder, but I think they'd be wrong. Right. Your instincts would say, yeah, process. Sure. We got a process. But I, th I really think you have to find something that, to, to keep them together, right? And keep that core and the team concept together. But it has to be an enjoyable thing because I'm looking, hang on, I'm looking at the, the old standings here. There is no chance they're making the playoffs. Correct. So there has to be something else that's galvanizing this group if you want them to compete. Then it's got to be something fun and interesting. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Maybe it's a treehouse, or like I, I don't care what it is. It almost has to be organically found. And remember when St. Louis won the cup? They were the shits last place in January first or whatever, and they go on a run because they went out and had some pops in Philly and and found a song. Yeah, it has to be something silly and stupid and just fun. Maybe. You can't even do mustaches anymore because it's <laughs> it's used for other things. Everyone's gone, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, like it has to be something stupid some and, and organic and, and just enjoyable. Where it's like, okay, and maybe it's about helping the kids. Like, let's get Pelche twenty goals. I don't know what it is, but for him to go in there and go, okay, we got to watch video, and oh, we're, we lost again, so we need to spend more time at the rink, and we're gonna do a little bit. Of, mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the challenge is you're trying to incorporate a lot of new defensemen too. So I think there would be that want to be like, oh, let's go over systems. Let's go over systems. But the last thing a veteran wants right now is to draw this thing out longer than it already is. You've got a small window every day where you're asked to be a professional as, as a hockey player. It's what three to four hour windows where you've got to be your, your best. That's it. It's not a nine hour shift. It's not easy, but give us your best for these three hours, yep. three, four times a week. And there's, there's no issues here. Noodles talked about it the other day on that flames team before you got there retro about you take the five guys and we've got 10 games left and you guys that doesn't really work guaranteed contracts guys make a big dough oh so i is is mckenzie Weger going to be threatened by it so that doesn't work i i agree with you and it's got to be something where it's not so lame that guys are going to be this is stupid but you're right it has to be something that can somehow bring the team together guy I, I this we wanted to make the playoffs we're not, but you know what? We're in the NHL. We're taking home six figure checks every couple weeks. Let's, let's do some, let's find a way here. Do for a, a freaking, month. Do a team fund. Like, and this again. Okay. So first couple of things, one Husk has got to be cognizant of this and actually have a plan for it, but it might not be his to implement. So hear me out. It might have to be the leadership group itself. If yeah. Michael Backlund has missed the playoffs and he's like, I don't want to deal with this and just, that's not going to help. If Kadri's like, oh God, that's not going to help. The leadership group would know the room is good or better than anyone, even the coach. What's cool for the group? Are we a tight group? Are we going on a, uh, are we going to rent a, a carnival, carnival cruise line and whatever? Every win, everyone puts 500 bucks up and we're going to go do this at the end of the year. I don't know what it is, but it has to be something silly and fun and enjoyable. Yeah. And the leadership group should take yeah. ownership of that. Now, that might be the best coaching that Husky can do for the last month is kind of like Noodles and Sutter. Bring the leadership group in and go, yeah. how are we going to handle this? Yeah. yeah they how all know what's happening here. How are we going to... Dreams because we know it. You can never admit that you're out not going to make the playoffs until you're mathematically, yeah, whatever, right? Like, okay, yeah. but we're we're grown adults. We're we've been doing this for a while. What do we, how do we make the most of what we've got here? 
And wins and losses, yeah, I guess. But how do we find a way to make this enjoyable and not just a month that we're going to just hate? Because you can't. The one thing you you're not going to make the playoffs, but the one thing you can do is create a culture that's enjoyable and fun, and that will carry over next year. Even though there'll be some changes, if that group leaves in April and they say, "F that was fun," yeah, we didn't do as good as we can. Yeah, we didn't have a chance to win, but damn it, I really liked playing with this group. I really enjoyed doing this shit. This was awesome. That's what you need to create for so that next year when guys are coming back, it's yes, let's go. Yeah. And again, this this could have been a three month spiral. It's not. It's one. Yeah. This is this is almost best case scenario when you think about how much clamoring there's been and it an understanding be. of like that the road that this group was on was not going to work. You could not just cap yourself out and add more vets and lock into this core of a mediocre team long term. They they didn't do it. Like, but they also hung around in this thing all the way into March. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and so I, I know we're here today and we have to do a show every day here, but it, it's almost been best, best case scenario if you really believe they had to tear it down to build it back up. And best case scenario will be that they've had this season, it's been decent, and they leave at the end of the year feeling good about the squad and wanting to come back. Yeah, right. and you've already found a possible. You found a Zeri. You know, you, you've but you, but you understand, right? When we when we have these conversations, there it's there's the, the layers. There's there's that which is real life Conroy perspective, mm -hmm. and then there's Nazem Kadri. Yep. Well, Nazem Nazem Kadri, seven million a year. He's a pro athlete. Hey, Pop Naz, we found a possible, and we try like, yeah, that's that's great, but I I'm the guy that you know what I mean. It's in inside yeah. that room. You have to. It, it's been. It's been great the way they've dug in and they have played hard, but I would go and everyone, sorry, Dean, but I would go to everyone's contract, find out who's got bonuses. And that would, should be the team rule. Get everyone as much bone. Murray Edwards would love to hear it. Get everyone as much bonus as they can. Maybe yeah, you need one of those. They even have more. those anymore. Maybe no. you need like the, the cardboard cutout, like in major league. And after yes. every win, you peel off a piece of Murray's bikini. Yeah. And look, how many teams are dealing with this? In the league, because only 16 get in. Let's say three or four are hanging around in the chase to the last week. Like, th I don't want us to make this sound like this is a really, really boy. This is a unique, difficult situation. Like, not not making. There's any. there's there's 12 every year that have, been, and there's been 10 that have been in this for over a month now. But right? it's just it's right now. The the deadline was a week ago, less than a week ago. Some liked players are gone. You're not making the playoffs. Yeah. Teams have to go through it, but the, the flames are one of them. So how are they going to do it? Well, it's and not about, for me again, I'm interrupting you, but for me, it's that's all fine and good. We can recognize what we have. That doesn't mean that we should be trying to, I, I don't want to be Anaheim or Chicago next year. I want to set myself up for a better situation. And that's, mm -hmm. I think what we're discussing. We all recognize what it is. Is there a way to make some real positives come out of the last month. And I I don't think that just playing it out and saying, well, you're getting paid and you're a professional accomplishes that. That's just, okay. Some guys you don't have to worry about, but I, I think you guys have hit the nail on the head. It's like, where's Kadri's head at? When you watch this team down the stretch last year, that was not uh, high water we're talking about two different Kadri's things. Career. I think you're worrying about... Uh, that we're just talking about specifics. I'm talking about trying to create a culture in this last month yeah. where guys are pumped to play here because we've not had that. They've played very well. I'm not questioning what they've done for the year. They've had some outstanding performances from individual players. The team is, it probably is where it should be, but that doesn't mean you, you okay, well, we got a month. Let's just get through this and we'll work as hard as we can and just let it go. No, use this time as a positive to grow something. Word gets out in the, in the league. I, fuck those guys in Calgary. Looks like they're having fun. Like, it does matter. You have to make it a place where guys still want to come and play. And I, we can say the bullshit. Oh, it's a, what a great city. It's on the lowest the lower end of desirable places to play. And if it if you're winning, it makes it more desirable. And if guys are having fun, it makes it more desirable. You have to create something that makes these guys want to stay and be here. And it can't be just a paycheck. And I think having 
guys like Conroy and Huska will help yeah. because yeah, right. in the, and in the past or just whoever, if depending on who your GM, who your coach, who your, you know, who your leaders are off the ice, they will dictate a lot of the temperature in that room. Are we, are we allowed to have some fun here despite the fact that we've lost some games and we're going to miss? Is that, is that permissible? And I, I wonder if sometimes if a coach saw it, be like, what the H are we doing here? Why are we, we're dancing around. We're having a good. We we're losing games. I I feel like there's there'd be a welcome spot for that here. I imagine this scenario under Daryl, and it's like oh, and that's I think a big part of why they had to make the change last year is that it was like you, you can you imagine the difference showing up to the rink every day now with Tosca versus Daryl. Yeah. It's not to say Daryl's not a good coach. We know he is, but it's just in this particular scenario. God, would you not want to go to the rink last year at this time? And they didn't. They played like they didn't. And the other thing that can be established is who's out. If you do create a fun, enjoyable culture and you've got 15 guys that are in there banging the drum and you've got a handful that aren't, that can be a, right? That that raises, I don't know, red flags or whatever you want to call it. But if Conroy's watching going, huh. I've got this group over here really doing what we hope and want and are trying to create. And then I got a handful of guys in this little click over here in this corner, not hmm, maybe this off season. This is the group that I need to deal with. Something to, uh, something to try and something to accomplish over the last 17 games. And what about us? How are we going to approach these uh, 17 games? Look at look at how my feet are. Look, oh, your feet shorts are almost wow. a nut shot. Sock feet up on the uh, window yeah. sill. So what have I done? I've put my feet up. Mm -hmm. Well, in fairness, you have really grinded this winter. I know. A lot of it's, trips and travel. It's about time. Oh, yeah, it's about time that you burn uh, it, Rhett. Yeah. So yeah. if the two of you could find some way to make it fun for me for the next mm -hmm. month or so, that would be. See, ideal. I thought you were the guy. That's Send that's your under. job. I think to, uh, there's I've only one everything. person not having fun on the show most days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping that uh, you know this off season there will be changes made. Okay. And if that means I need to be a sour puss to get shipped out of town, then I'll do it. Service Credit Union, the service big share is back for the sixth year with your chance to win a million dollars just by saving money. Anyone can enter by becoming a member and saving with service every $500 saved gives you five entries into the service big share contest. Now, what are some other ways? You can save in a daily banking account. Fast track your savings with a high yield savings account. Invest in a GIC. Service has these during this contest period with great interest rates and term lengths. Transfer your existing savings to services uh, to, for, to service for chances to win a million dollars. The contest ends April 30th, 2024. Skill test required. For rules, visit service.ca slash win. That's service.ca slash win. That would set your summer up, eh? Uh, hi, it's a uh, uh, Bill Twilliger from Service Credit Union. Uh, it's, 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 uh, congratulations, you got a million dollars. Million dollars. A million oh, dollars. Baby. Let's what? go. That's unbelievable. Are you sure this isn't a scam, Mr. Twilliger? No, it's Service Credit Union. It's uh, Service oh Credit Union. Uh, Service.ca slash win. It's out on the internet there. You go check it out. A million dollars. $500 saved. Gets you five entries. What are you talking about? I didn't remember moving my money over there. Thank you, Mr. Twilliger. Can well, I take you to dinner, sir? Are you single? I don't think Miss I don't think Miss Twilliger like that very much. <laughs> but I am free on Thursday. <laughs> uh, look at my blushing over here. Oh, jeez. March twenty third, we're going to be over at Greta, and you've heard us talking about it. Um, we go. We've got the alley set up. We're watching the game. There's food. There's drinks. Arcade games. Everybody's having a good time. Greta put it. Uh, Greta put some work in. This is this is what we're talking about right here.
there you have it. All that was missing was some uh, Pinder high kicks. That's all we needed in there, and it would have been – you'd really captured the spirit of the thing. Yeah, I promised more high kicks on the 23rd. I was roped in to do an afterburner that night, so it was uh... – it's not peak Pinder, which is probably maybe the right amount for some people. There you see it. It is game day hosted by Flames Nation and Barn Burner, uh, presented as well. Our partners at McLeod Law and Village Honda. Get your tickets at nationgear.ca. There will be a there will be a charge, but uh, the thing is, it's going to charity, and you'll be way on the other side. There's far more than ten dollars value in uh, in this whole deal. You have my word on it, and it's Vancouver who might still be without uh, Thatcher Demko week to week. Is that what? Uh... They had an interesting finish last night, did they not? Because they had a 3 nothing lead, 3-1 yeah, uh, Colorado. They got colorado last night. Oh, on the second half of a battle. Avalanche down 3 nothing. second and... Eh. McKinnon, Rantanen, McKinnon. Avalanche. Jeez. Look out. Thank you. What's up, I need man? Jack to email me a link. Can you do that, Jack? Email oh. yourself a link. Thank you. I'm completely frosted over here. This computer is a problem. I thought we had fixed it. That His computer's good. We've got a way to make this one better. We just um, need to get back to that. I know right. how to do it. You get to yeah, do you it. Do. Just do it. Do it. Go ahead, just do it. Do uh, it. Do it. Now, I don't know if you heard uh, this morning. You're, you're kind of close to it. How many times have you gone to Pittsburgh, Brett, right, this year? Oh, two tickets for Two pickets, mm. you see? Lots. You probably, probably lots. this year, six at least. Well, you might be a suspect then. Oh, dear. I'm not sure if what Don't you've heard. Don't blame me for anything. Um, there has been a heinous crime committed somewhere around Pittsburgh. This from the Penguins' Twitter this morning. The Penguins announced today that the shipment carrying the Yar Yarmer Yager bobbleheads for tonight's game has been stolen en route to Pittsburgh. What? As a result, the bobbleheads will not be distributed at tonight's game, but will be distributed at a later date. Somebody stole the bobblehead. So we don't know. Did they steal the truck? Is this some uh, Sopranos type thing? It's got to be Tony. Thought there was a bunch of DVD players in the back, and it's all these bobbleheads. Well, this feels like an inside job. I don't know. Well, there are. What could you do with ten thousand bobbleheads? I think you sell them. Yeah, <laughs> one 10, at a time. 000? You got to really spread it away. out because red flags. Well, what you do is you get those bad boys back to Czechia and sell them all before the authorities in North America yeah. can huh. get on the caper. Hmm. Yeah. So. They're trying to figure this out. So if people that are going to the game tonight, they thought they were going to be getting a Yager bobblehead. They're getting a coupon yeah. or some kind of a token. So at a later date, you're going to be able to get this thing. So really a sad, sad tale. They are trying to nail down who did this. Obviously, they're looking for some uh, suspects. Right. And they've gotten to a short list. <laughs> mm. There's the traveling Yagers who obviously look, don't they look like that would be, uh, that's the type of crew. I know oh, those boys. Geez, I Hey, buddy, I got a flat tire. Could you give me a hand over here? And then it's a tire wrench to Long. the back of the head, and one of them's hopping in the driver's seat, and they're gone with these bobbleheads. I would say, uh, like, knowing these fellas, they would never do anything like this sober. The challenge being, there's not a lot of time those guys are together with their sober. Well, I was going to say, so how I often I think they are they? real suspects. Yeah, I think they, uh, whether they've been fingerprinted yet, uh, remains to be seen, uh, and there's also another uh, another one, another suspect, and Where's the people. Flames jersey. <laughs> That's true. Uh, this this one right here, uh, gritty. Oh jeez, is yeah. topping the uh, the suspect. State rival. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at his eyes. But I feel right? like if gritty got him, gritty gets to keep him because nobody's messing with that thing. No one's messing with gritty. God, that would be one of the great. I mean, it's a, against the law, of course. Steal a truck. But that would be the greatest prank of all time for a for a mascot. Already, Gritty is really he, he's the gold standard for mascots in the National Hockey League. If you stole a truckload of Yager bobbleheads, because Yager played for the Flyers too, right? If That's you right. stole bobbleheads to ruin bobblehead night, whoa! I'll, again. And I, I, it's good we're on the internet because I'm I'm pretty controversial here. I almost hope that's the case. If I'm, I'm the Flyers, I'm leaving into that. Like I you wouldn't should have him in a 
loading van and authorities. Like this is this is great stuff here. You've been yeah, you've I don't given quite it, an opportunity. It might not be gritty, but I, Flyers fans definitely have to be on the list. Gritty, they have to make a video, right? He, of him well, exactly. running around with bobbleheads. They got to do something there. So anyway, I uh, hope everyone's okay. Uh, t- you know, T's and P's to the truck driver. If the NHL was really good, they would have Gritty with a bag full of Yager bobbleheads walking <laughs> mm-hmm. down the street and then falling out or something like that. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. chewing off all the, the heads of the penguin yeah. Yager. Like, let's go here. Yeah, it'd be terrific. Uh, we'll get to the Pinterport and roll. Want to mention, I, I know that it's... Uh, so when is uh when spring? When do we when spring spring sprung spring? Well, it depends if you're in Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, October. Yeah, here it more. is definitely spring. You, uh, the windows and doors are open here in beautiful Buffalo. Yeah, I uh, got a little chilly overnight, but we're warming up. We're warming up. We're getting there. And you know what's going to be? It's going to be patio season. And we've been talking about our buddies up at Mad Rose, Mad Rose Pub last year, or I guess over the I guess a couple years. They put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of money into establishing and setting up their, it's kind of like an outdoor indoor. It's got the retractable roof. It's like, I get like a three season kind of patio, but it's one of the best patios in the city. And don't, so don't sleep on it. Get ready. Mad Rose pub have been with us right from the start day one. They're an OG and we want you to keep them in mind as we get to the warmer temperatures and get outside and have yourself a nice frosty cold one, maybe some, Maybe some finger foods, maybe some pizza, some of that delicious pizza that they serve up there at 15 Royal Vista Place. You can visit their website to order takeout, gourmet pizza, that dough and sauce. They make it fresh every day, every single day. Mm, mm, mm. 20 beers on tap, kid friendly, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But I got thinking about that this morning. That patio that Matt's got wheeling up there. It's ready for you. It's going to be uh, uh, lit. It'll be off the hook, is what it'll be. Off the hizzy? Is that hizzy? The- hizzle? Hizzle or his his uh, his hizzo? Lizzo? Lizzo. I like Lizzo. Lizzo's good. She was sleeping in a car like five years ago trying to make it. What a star. Love it. She uh, she plays the flute. Is that She's right? She's a flutist. She's a flautist. She's a very accomplished flautist. Why is that funny? I it's just a weird instrument. It's it's really it looks I don't know that a human can play a flute and not look weird. The tuba is like the size of a small car and that's even looks more natural than the flute. What's the best uh wind instrument? What's the coolest wind Woodwind? instrument? Uh is it is it just the sax? Sax is it, cool. the trumpet? Trumpet but doesn't Trumpet's have the okay. ray. Sax is way cooler. For sure. I feel like this. And what what did Kenny G the? That's a saxophone. Is that a sax or yeah. is it yeah. a, a piccolo or something? It's definitely not a piccolo. He's a saxophone piccolo? player. Now there was a guy that traveled around with the Roots, known as Tuba Gooding Jr. Oh. He was pretty cool. <laughs> I get because it's you can't. I just yeah. get you Tuba. But I was going to say about Kenny G, that guy slayed that P back in the day. If you know what I'm saying. The foodly tootly, the tootly saxophone. What are That's you right. About? The P is silent and saxophone. <laughs> the saxophone. That's right. I mean, that really? guy. Oh, Hairless dude. Whisper, right? hmm. Kenny G. Yeah, the saxophone. Wow. Foodly doodly do. <laughs> it's like, uh, what's that? The, the Pied pop Piper. Pop pop, room 612. Hibbity, hibbity, hibbity. Well, the, the Pied Piper. He was the. Sweet saxophonist. The women couldn't handle. They couldn't handle it. Who's the Pied Piper? Wasn't that the what guy was it? Pied, what was the Pied Piper? He would be the piping, kids. and then having sex with the kids. they would follow him through <laughs> the. Pied Come Piper. on! Who wasn't it? The kids? Who had the kids? You've Let's never heard of the Pied here. Piper. <sighs> I've I'm heard of the Pied Piper, tales. but I have not heard of him revered in a positive light. Well, I'm not sure it is revered. I'm just talking about the control the the impact that the pied the piper, pied piper of hamlin almost like uh you're uh not Pines a march twist they uh what's when you get you're you know, you're getting very sleepy what, hypnotist <laughs> imagine if you could hypnotize people and you're a ventriloquist you could do it with your puppet that really the pied do, yeah, piper like, lured the rats away 
That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not the all, ladies. Rats. I'm, all I'm saying is Dude, he now played you're comparing ladies to he was the Pied hey. Piper, and the rats just followed. They couldn't they help. There was they were out, they were under his control. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Is that Kenny G had people under his spell? I thought you said the Pied Piper was some kind of weird perv. No, no, it was just the the control all right. because of his also weird perv. air air wind instrument. A woodwind, yes. <laughs> the saxophone and the tuba maba. Um, so did we decide? So the uh, sax is the the way to go. Yeah, sax is the way to go. Guitar is a winner. Lead singer is good. Is Drummer does okay. Go. Saxophone slays. You always want to go sax. The saxophone. <laughs> the saxophone. And the trumpet is a hit at sporting events, but I'm not sure where else. Yeah, it probably Army. gets a lot of thirty year old high fives, but not funerals, uh, right? Army. The thing now, that, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Amherst wait Amherst. a minute. Is the bagpipe a wind instrument? It's got to be some kind of modified wind instrument, doesn't it? You're well, blowing into it. You got to blow no, into it. into brass, and brass isn't a woodwind. Like, saxophone is not a woodwind. Clarinet would be the oboe. Did we say a woodwind? Oboe. No, I, we were just talking wind instruments. So, for sure, um, you'd have your brass. And then you're you're wooden, and yeah, I, I would think the, the 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 bagpipes have to be right. You're blowing into it. Yeah, they're kind of annoying. I don't know that uh, you're getting your as much saxophone as the other guys. Like, yeah, I don't think this you're. No way. Like that was cool for two minutes. That's really annoying now. I don't think Kenny Kenny G is slaying the P with the, the bagpipes. No, so, Pinder Kenny P. Remember. We should have called him. Boom, remember the priest from the roast? Yes, of course. He, <laughs> such an idiot. <laughs> Whenever he was going into a golf tournament or something, he would hire bagpipes to have, when he was come, uh, being an, or right, joining, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, walking around the course with bagpipes. <laughs> God, that's annoying. Well, remember that, because that was always that's the thing standard. when you go to the uh, curling events. And oh. they're gonna all oh, yeah. all the ranks are marched out frappa 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 fra. But there is something, you know what? When, when it's uh there is something haunting about the bagpipes when you hear them if it's at a funeral or uh remembrance day. Remembrance day, that sort of yeah. thing. Oh yeah. How how did the like that's a how is that instrument made? Because you can think about just okay, so I got this stick, and you oh well, what if I put hold, hoo, hoo, like, they got it a getting, cow? They got it a cow at one point, or something, something like that, that, and cleaned octopus? it out. Octopus. It's similar started. to the to the haggis situation, Dean. The less you know, the better. Is that what it is? Yes. It would have to be something sick. Some yeah. sick bastard invented some the gross bagpipes. Stomachs. Johnny yeah. bagpipes back in the day. You're a freak, Johnny P. <laughs> no, you got to hear it. Just wait, I got it's gonna take me a couple minutes. I gotta blow it, I gotta fill it with air first. <laughs> what are you doing? What are Kill you that doing? Thing. No, I'm just filling the bag. I just gotta blow on it to fill the bag. I'm done with you. Are there any gigs for saxophone or for the uh, the bagpipers that aren't just well dead remember That's tough, ACDC tough, tough had the bagpipes Did they? in uh in that that one song? What the hell was it? Um is that like later free, in the Freddy Free? Come on now, damn it. Um, anyway, I there it's hard to get it in though, right? You don't sneak in the bagpipes, no. it's kind of right in your face. Johnny bagpipes. Johnny don't B. Least, don't, I mean Kenny P and Johnny he B. He served he served time for something for sure. They're killing sheep to get their guts. Oh, so you're the guy that invented the yeah. Son of yeah. Well, what got you? So you grabbed the thing, you just started blowing on it and blowing into it, and then it made noise. And you, mm. I'm just gonna thank you, Attaboy Lou Dog. It's a long way to the top when you want to rock and roll. Whee! Right. Whee! Whee! Right. Whee! 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 Not easy to do. Not easy to slide the bagpipes into some uh, Aussie rock. Only the best, Dean, could make that look easy. Want to rock and roll? Talks about where they, the, how far back the bagpipe goes, but not about how. No, eh? Didn't have Wikipedia back then. Tough break. I'm just trying because you've got the, because there's the it's bag, and then there's great antiquity. Because there's the other like stems that come off it, and then there's the main mm -hmm. one. Yeah. 
You blow into one and you're yeah, and you're kind one. of you're doing this this sort of thing. Huh. What about the one where you'd blow it, but it was a keyboard? Oh, you kind of blow, it was, and then it was a. Is that what it was? The keytar? Keytars are bangers, man. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you want to pump out some dance hits? Just throw some keytar in. Well, that only blew into that. I think that was just a piano and a guitar handle. Do you Strap. see the the video? Uh of Jack Black when he was on Fallon and he played, I think it's the Saxa boom or whatever. It yes. Is. Yes. That was very good. And then, <laughs> and then the roots jumped in. Good times. See, this is what we're going to do. 17 games, 17 more games. We just need stuff. Like you, this. uh, you should see the amount of dumb shit I have. You're not really going to need much filling. The melodica. Is a handheld free reed instrument similar to a pump organ or harmonica. A musical That's the keyboard one. on top and is played by blowing air through a mouthpiece. Melodica. I'm going to get me one. Or the Arena guy these days. The yeah. I'm going to play if you're it. You're not Kenny P. You don't have some hookups. I'm going to play it when industry. I go to my golf tournament. Yeah. I preferred Betty Cooper than Melodica. She was kind of a bitch, to be quite honest. I mean, Archie was always nicer than Reggie, right? Yeah, Reggie was a bad guy. dick. Well, yeah. that shows you. That's how it I works. Guess, yeah. That's how Chicks. you get ahead in life. That's right. Be in a... <laughs> so you had, who was the other? Because there was Betty and Veronica, yeah. Archie, Reggie. Who was the redhead? Uh, well, Archie was redhead. Red. No, I know. Or, yeah, or, no, you mean no, the girl? Yeah. Because yeah, then there's good. Jughead. Yeah. And he, didn't he have a gal? What was her name? Yeah, she kind of looked like Jughead. She did kind of look like and Jughead. A a yeah. And then uh, you had Moose. Moose and, and Midge. Midge, that's who it was. Yeah. yeah. Archie, yeah. Jughead, Betty, Veronica, Reggie, Kevin Keller. What? No, this is not right. No. You had me oh, till there. Here we go. Yeah. Wait a minute, though. Archie Comics. All these say they came out of it. Really? The Josie and the Pussycats was an Archie. Comic. Josie, yes. Watch your mouth. The saxophone cats. Jughead. Archie Kevin. Comics. I don't remember Kevin, but Valerie. Val? Josie. Really? So, these people don't seem right to me. Veronica. Maybe they've advanced since I stopped reading them. There was Dilton Doyle. Midge Dilton. Clump. Mr. Weatherby. Trev. <laughs> Ethel. Ethel? Is was Ethel with Jughead? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He loved burgers, eh? Jughead? Big God did he, he hammered him back. And, I mean, lean? There was nothing to him. He's kind of like Joey Chestnut. Joey's a large man. He had a uh some you think sort he had of eating worm. disorder. Yeah, tapeworm. Is that what they found out at the last is episode? Barfing those up that? after the comic strips over. Okay, are we done? It's a, I got just got to go around back because I can't keep this slender figure if I'm having nine right. burgers. I'm gonna need a bigger pointy hat if I keep eating my burgers like this. Sabrina. That name rings a bell. Does Jack have any idea what we're talking? Oh about? God, he's just like, what are these old? Jack, do you have about? any idea what we're talking about? No, and I don't read so. I have no idea. He does yeah. struggle. No, and you've asked him about Archie before. This is he's now over two on the have you he hasn't picked up Archie since the last time you mentioned it. You know what? Jack is Jack is batting almost at the average of uh, Aussie Brad. Like no one can no one can meet Aussie Brad. No. But Jack rarely disappoints. It's always like short to the point and like a snide comment about something in the world. Fucking fire Matt Canada is useless. God damn it. Kenny Pickett, best quarterback ever. So Quick, who, in a note. Who was Ethel? Somebody's saying Ethel was uh, Archie, Veronica, Betty, Jughead, Kevin. You're uh, Kevin. There's Reggie, Valerie, Josie, Sabrina, Raj. Oh, this is some new wave. Shit. Yeah, I don't see. There was a, there's a Trevor. You're going to come to a Trev. I don't remember Trev. There's Trev. Yeah, no, Trev's no. Well, uh -oh. time 
Time for well, the pen report. Time to get serious. That's right. Yeah, enough of this. Hey, stop getting around. It's time for the Pinder Report. Push the button. Ryan Pinder. Ryan Pinder. Ryan Pinder. Brought to you by Village Honda. The 2024 Honda Accord was redesigned last year, chosen by Car and Driver Magazine as the number one mid-sized sedan. One of the most reliable vehicles on the road is better than ever. Superior ride quality, reliability, and impressive fuel economy thanks to the EXL Hybrid. Check out the Accord and more at your dealership for life. Located in the Northwest Auto Mall, it's Village Honda, and they present the Pinder Report. Fellas, we start with the wild card standings. Flames in action against divisional rival Vegas tonight, and the Flames are well, well out of it. Well, well. Now 10 back? Eh, with 17 to play. It's Vegas, by the way, they're trying to reel in. Uh, they're quite good and uh, hold the second wild card. Now tied with Los Angeles for third in the Pacific. We'll see if they don't uh, slide up into that 2-3 matchup with the Oilers. Um, that is the opponent tonight. Flames' march has been, uh, well, a bit of a mixed bag. They, they won their fifth in a row at one point in this month, fellas. But since then, a bit of a grind. A bit mm. of a grind. What do you uh, got to get to to get into playoffs? 96 minimum? I don't know what the threshold is now. It looked like it was going to be really low in the West, but Nashville's on a heater and Vegas all of a sudden is flying. So I, I think you're probably around that 95 point mark again, but I just don't know who's going to hang. Like, do we see St. Louis? Maybe Minnesota gets going. I, I've been waiting for Minnesota to get going all year, fellas. I'm still waiting. I'm still. Dean, can you do the math on no. that? How many for us to get to 95 if we have 67? You're going to need uh, 32 wins between now and the end of the regular season. Well, how many games are left? 17. Uh, 17. Ah. Okay. Where are we picking? Where are we picking? Well, fine. Kenny Pickett. George Pickett, better than Kenny Pickett. Yeah. Uh, okay, Vegas, what do they look? Well, first off, Hunter Bristevich has been inked by the Calgary Flames. Uh, as of March, they were eligible to sign him. He is a late birthday, so he will be eligible to play in the American Hockey League next year. This is an absolute no-brainer, and anyone suggesting he wouldn't sign here does not understand Bring him how up. contracts work. Now, he uh, can play at the end of this year, too, right? Of course he can. Yeah, he can go on an ATO at any point to the American League, but as a full-timer in the American League, right. most of his draft class won't, but he's a late birthday. He is. Does that blow his first year if he plays? Uh, it'll be an ATO this summer, so I no. Know. Can you um, say some words that matter to me i don't know what i don't mean. think you care anyway you're It'd just be a minor league only games. if he plays nhl games i believe is how that works you could income to a pto or an ato but typically you'd have money in ato so that you can preserve your one he also can you tell me what ato stands it's an for? amateur tryout rather than wow. a professional tryout yeah which they do all the time in uh, the spring with collegiate and a bunch of uh, major junior players at mm -hmm. the end of their seasons so look for one of those potentially. My, un and my uncle had a GTO. Beautiful car. Awesome. Jack thing went like snot. Jack, Jack spent weeks spending, GTO. playing GTA. GTA, yeah. Yeah, G GTA 5, is that the good one? Yeah, G and almost GTA 6. Almost? It's coming out soon? Year, yeah. Is it coming out soon? A year, yeah. My kids be... literally go to YouTube and watch guys play GTA 5. They're that is too the young one. for that, Ryan. What? Like if I if they just go down, that's they're what too they young for that, Ryan. Well, there's certain they'll build tracks and stuff, and people play them. It's like they're challenges. too young for that, it's Ryan. It's less racy stuff for sure. It's like hey, you, you don't do know this. If they're on the tubes. You don't. I don't know think they could be watching us, Jack. I don't think Rhett's mic is working. Yes. Rhett, can you what what is what what does Rhett say? Rhett, I can't. You're muted. Just keep Rhett. If you can hear us, just keep keep. They're so, too keep, young for that, Ryan. Okay, just Ryan. Can't. They are too young for. GTAs We're gonna need to check Rhett's connection. GTOs. I just maybe get him to hard power hard cycle. reboot. <laughs> what about STDs? Are they old enough for you those? <laughs> they are not. <laughs> uh like Vegas lines. You have it, and then you then you're immune to it. <laughs> Boy, can't get to these lines quick enough. How about that? Look at the Vegas Gold Knights, fellas. This is without Mark Stone. This is without I, ha I got an Shirtle. STD in a GTO one time. Nobody wants to know. Um, <laughs> Dean, we can't yeah, talk we can just, about my Jack, just turn mute my goddamn mic on. Dean, Hello? stop talking about this stuff. Yeah, he enjoys the, the toilet humor. He's a stop the humor. hammering. And it's always toilet humor. That's the baseline here. Oh, um, 
don't really have much to say about Vegas. We know they're good. We've talked about them a bunch. Ruthless and cup Ain't contenders. Man yet again. You, bum. you did nothing while you were here. You'll do nothing in Vegas. Right, right. Have a great time there, long hair. I long hope hair, not. don't care. Mr. I'm rich and yeah, you're not. I hope you go all in at the blackjack table and the dealer gets 21. No, oh, no. All in in blackjack, but you know what I'm saying. That would be bad if you got 21. Let's uh, move to. No one cares about the Burstevich signing. I mean, we all expect Portugal. That. That's, that's I want to move to Portugal next. That's my yeah. Point. You've already talked about that. We definitely. Burse- it's not a bad thing, right? No, it's a great thing. Burstevich yeah. signed good. Good, yeah. Now go kick some ass in the playoffs with Kitchener, and then get your ass out to the Wranglers and help them. That's right. Now last night in Vancouver, did you see this? The big Z Gordy Howe hat trick. Now he can't fight for shit. Still can't. And Manson absolutely handled him. But that still is a fight. An assist and a goal in the same game for the old roller coaster that we used to call ours for two plus years, Dean. In it to win it. You like, uh, I think you like having him on your team. Defends your honor because Manson took a run at JT Miller in the end yep. boards. And Zagorov said, not on my watch, are we, Bucko. Are we seeing a George Peros ringy ring ring for that I one? Because like- that was pretty bad. He's pinned to the wall and then he comes in and drills him right on the head. Yeah. I like your use of bucko. I have not heard that for a very long time. I'm bringing it back. I think you need to. I Thanks. think you get a you get a bucko hat or something, maybe some t-shirts. I'm with bucko. you on the bucko. I'm in for bucko. I got no problems with that. Get Listen right here, bucko. Not on my watch, bucko. bucko. Not while I'm uh-huh. around. Put down, put down. Thank you. Bucko. So the Gordy Howe hat trick, of course, named after Two. Mr. Hockey. Gordy Howe. Two. One of the greats. Two. We know he does not have many, despite being named after him. He's had two. So, Dean, who is the career all-time leader in Gordy Howe hat tricks? Because he was in the building last night watching. Rick Tuck. Bam! Yeah, Rhett. Woo! And the other guy is Brennan right Shanahan. That was my old Gordy Howe right to your sh- kisser, the old Gordy Howe elbow. Bam! Bam! Take Love that, it. Bucko. The trivia there. Yeah. How Most of us it? know it, but uh, nonetheless, trivia. If you got people new to hockey, you can try that out on them. But why did they name it the Gordy Howe hat trick? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. why would they do two thousand four hundred? And you know what? That would be that would be a cool you. You would be really revered in your group. If say you're at the pub and guys like, mm-hmm. "Hey, did you see Zadora? I've got a Gordy Howe hat trick." If mm-hmm. you then chimed in and said, "Hey, fellas, uh, <laughs> did you know that actually Gordy Howe only had two of those in his NHL career, and actually it should be called a Rick Tockett." Hat trick because he had 18, and that's the most in NHL history. That's right. And then and you Brendan Shanahan, who would later become the NHL's chief disciplinarian, he had 17. That's right. And you'd ask that person to leave the table and go sit outside. <laughs> Are we all Cliff Clavens now because of Google? You can be. I, like and the thing is, I don't know why. Right? I think our brains adapt very quickly. And so we just don't remember shit that now is a Google away. Why would you remember it if you could just Google it in a second? Like, I'm not wasting any storage on what time it is and what day of the week it is. I can press the phone and there it is. Because you can throw it, you can just throw it in there as well. Actually, boom, the Pied Piper of uh, Patikapais, he uh, was uh, the mice, leading the mice out of the uh, rat. Oh my God. Nadine, the March of Ides is really about Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was murdered on the 15th of March. A murder. Let's move. 80 assists for McDavid. He um, still good at hockey, huh? Very, very good. Here's your list of uh, consecutive 80 assist seasons. So someone did it three times in a row. Mario Lemieux, that's very good. Bobby Orr three times in a row. Coffee three times in a row. McDavid's now done it twice. Orr also has a two or a two season streak in there. Gretzky 13. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? For more than a decade. For more than a decade, he was an assist plus a game. They played 80 for some seasons in there. Like that, that is wild. And it'd be interesting while we're talking about Cliff Clavin, if you up that number, most consecutive 90, 90. plus assist, 100, 100 assists. Yeah. I mean, the list is one name. <laughs> That's what we're getting to here. Now, Kucherov has two 80 plus assist seasons, but not consecutive if I don't see his name on the list there. So uh, there's McDavid. He also did other things last night. What else did McDavid do? Um, History make uh, looks like. Uh, oh, look at that! It's the first player with thirty points in a ten-game span at home since Mario in the mid nineties. With this guy, you haven't won a cup. You haven't even been to the final with this guy. Get him a GM. 
Tech. shut kind down Mario that year, just so you know. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. 95, 96. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Semifinals. In Pittsburgh, Jack. Bucko. Oh. Shots fired, Bucko. We're going on to round two, Bucko. <laughs> Conference final. Hey, Yager, cut your hair. Bucko. <laughs> Hey, eggs! I'm going to steal your bobbleheads in 20 years. <laughs> bucko. 30, 30 years, bucko. Uh, I, I just, it's going to be a topic for all of June. TJ Ginla doing things. Here we go. Left wing will Aginla. Aginla back inside the zone. He'll hit up here to cheat check for Aginla. It's good! <laughs> Lead of the game at five to four. Well, TJ had him in his own zone with stick handling. Looked like he might just throw it up off the boards. Instead, skates it out. Heads across the blue line. Nice little pass to Chichek. I wonder if his father likes that wiggy wiggy boo boo bullshit. Uh, sure well, I mean, the thing about Regan Bartel, of all the broadcasters that do bath salts before the game, he's the best. So take it up with him. Slow down on the meth, Regan. Now, what I also. <laughs> You would, I think you would appreciate Rhett because you tell all your young defense uh, when when the other team is entering the zone, make sure you're focused on the puck, yes, and then puck everybody watch. go to wherever it is. Don't worry about who's beside you. Yeah, well, let's watch it again. Go so to the puck, go everybody. Back. Yeah, we got to revert back let's to our team, early man. days in hockey where it's puck chase. That's we all. We need <laughs> to be puck focused. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the swarm of bees. The guy without the oh, puck will God. never hurt you. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Honestly, the guy is absolutely a legend, one of a kind. Uh, he's doing the best Regan Bardell he can yeah, do. He is. I love it. Go for it. Be different. Just do it. Do your thing, right? Hey, so now I'm not Jerome McGinley. I'm not going to phone you and bitch you out about calling my kid Iggy Wiggy Woo Woo. <laughs> so now Tej is having. A monster a year. A fantastic season. Teej is having a better draft year than his father did. What? Shut the front door. Trade him for Newendike. I, I, hang on now. <laughs> I think Newendike does. Newendike got a kid? Don't yes, he's, Joe's play, kid. he's playing down the street here at Canisius. We'll do the you Iggy Wiggy Woo Woo, the you swap. You want to make that trade? Oh, no, I'm telling you, that's kid. not the deal you no. want. That's not the deal you want. You want Iggy's kid. Our sources say that would be a uh, a poor trade. Mm. But we don't have Iggy's kid either. Not yet. Not yet. We'll see where the, the Flames end up drafting. It's sort of more and more looking like they could land in the top 10, top 9. Woo! Uh, the question is, will Tej be on the board then? Where is he projected to go? Because every time you refresh these rankings or they come up with updated rankings, he's higher than he was in the last one. And it was like, oh, he's probably second round. Well, maybe he could sleep in the late first round. Boy, he's looking like a middle of the first round back. He might be a pick in the teens. And now there's even some suggestions that depending on who's there and how the rest of the season goes, he could be a top 10 pick. What a draft season. So you're talking about Iggy Wiggy Woo Woo. Uh, Jack, could you? Is that who it was? Iggy uh, Wiggy. Yeah, yeah, Is that the guy that's, you don't need to do it again. It's fine. I mean, could if you want to. Tonight. Uh, our, buddy, our buddy Sam Cosentino actually yes. just put out his uh prospect list or the yeah. you know the ranking for the draft uh tige not in his top 10 yeah and that's kind of been the consensus to this point it's just that he keeps doing this there you see it yeah now that uh i believe that because there's the russian defense you see them conroy must just be frothing at the mouth oh all these God, russian defensemen jeez just beside Six himself to 12 Let's we got to get into the top five so i can draft them all uh the one I th and i think it's Saleyev. isn't he like six seven he's yes, just a with monster buttery hands it's a six foot seven headman kind of thing there's lots of d we told you that in the top 10 look uh, at the Yachty calgary hitman at five hitman. Uh -huh. don't know that he goes that high there's been sort of a, so a few hiccups the last month as the Hitmen have fallen out of a playoff spot. Hiccups. Yeah. Well, Caden Lindstrom, Medicine Hat Tiger. Sure. We just trade back, get more picks, Dean. Trade back. Trade back. Uh, tonight's NHL slate. 
Boy, there's a lot of non-Flames games and even one game involving the Flames, Dean. Soak it all up. We'll take yep. a peek later when we get to our what's on the menu for DoorDash. Uh, to the dumb chapter of the Pinder Report. Yeah, can we yeah, just have some on. fun? It's been so yeah. sportsy here. Well, why don't we start with an old staple of the Pinder Report, a ladder? Hmm? I wonder what's going to happen. That's winter, Brad. So. You got a, got a pail. Jack and Jill up the hill. I wonder if he'll fall down and break his no, crown. No, no, no. Yes. So, just put the bucket down. Oh, fuck! This is the best part. What happened, babe? What happened, babe? Ah! What happened, babe? Guys, look, I'm not I'm getting not involved. I'm out there. He fell off the ladder, I think. <laughs> That's correct, Inspector Cluso. He did fall off the ladder. <laughs> How did you do it? How did you piece it together? There's so much there. I'm calling 911. No, no I'm not. okay. No, you broke something. I saw that. You I saw something. you broke something. Did you think maybe you'd come and hold the GD ladder? Or just kind of monitor how it was going to go? He fell off the ladder, I think. I think he fell off the ladder. I saw really it down the street from where I live a few years ago. I saw kids with a ladder out midwinter <laughs> up on the roof it was it was interesting and yeah. you didn't stop and film for the pinder report no i don't <laughs> missed my chance how on, dare you we just start contributing to the content of this program that's a bad one though i mean oh mm. falling from a, a story up isn't good the fact then... that he's moving around is actually quite i mean <sighs> fortuitous I mean, people I, thought they should have called nine one one. That's how bad it was. Because I saw that I saw that one on on social media yesterday. It's like a uh, man falls off the ladder. He was okay. Define well, okay. Uh, like I mean, he's, he's not dead. Worse, he's alive. Yeah, like he's breathing. Yeah. I don't think he's okay. What happened, babe? <laughs> I, I think, think he. I think he, he <laughs> fell off the ladder. I think. I'll tell you. Oh, what. let's not I'm, jump to any conclusions here. You might have be good at some things. Lady. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> she must be really great at a few things to have her hanging around. Like Sudoku? What are you talking about? Floats. Not holding ladder. <laughs> She's a flautist. <laughs> Hell of a gal. Uh, Dean's off tomorrow, so we're sending him into the weekend like this guy. He is just ready to rock. I know a lot of you hating motherfuckers want me to fail. But guess what? It ain't happening. You know why? Because I got a motherfucking microwave on my head. Have fun in Edmonton, Dean. You found him. <laughs> yes! I said to Ryan, early, like, I think it was earlier this week, I'm like, have you seen the video of the guy? He's on the Micro motorbike and he's riding around with a, <laughs> a microwave on his head. And he's really good because he's like locking up the, it. the brakes and sliding yeah. and he never falls. Yes. Yeah. He's very adept at it. He's winning at life, dude. Like you. This is me, motherfucker. <laughs> I know you people want me to fall, and I'm not going to. I got to back away from my fucking head. Rhett was showing us the spring-like conditions in western New York. It looks gorgeous. And I know you and the shoveler, big, big thrill seekers, adrenaline junkies, love a good cliff jump. And they've been out. Uh, Mile high club. In uh, upstate New York. <laughs> not that high. Let's have a look. <gasps> Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Rhett, are you, you all right? Fall, did you fall just, off the hill? <laughs> just wait. Because <gasps> even if you make it, it's shallow as hell. You're, yeah. You don't think it goes from beach to 20 <laughs> feet deep, right? <laughs> what an entry. <laughs> Look at the technique. Rhett. <laughs> you now know he's fine. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you fall? Well, the good news. Red so what happened, babe? <laughs> the shoveler jumps next, right? I think he right? jumped off the cliff. <laughs> shoveler jumps next to save me, right? Shoveler had you back uh, healed up, and you were ready for your next adventure. This might have been the weekend before or after. I can't. I don't know. I didn't have them time-coded. Let's have a look. Five, four, three, 
two, one, send it. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Are those his knees you hear snapping? Or is that something else? It's flesh. Oh. One, send it. Oh, fuck. Oh, just hear it. Well, good thing he counted him down. Well, that's what you got to do because you get fearful. When I was jumping mm -hmm. off that bridge in South Africa, they mm -hmm. were like, okay, they kept you talking, kept you distracted. And all of a sudden, it was three, two, one, jump. And you're like, oh, I guess I'll jump. They say, if you hesitate, you're screwed. Yeah, we got to picture you on a different bridge coming up. But uh, let's get to uh, Bear, who I believe has been hoodwinking old Boomcat for a while here. Those are my dog. This is the time of year. There he is. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> Bear. No. And, and if you got two dogs, you should have like how many doses a day in, in the snow there. You you were looking light in the backyard, and I think we got to the bottom of the case. Now, Man, you cleanup's been easy this spring. <laughs> where, well, was, where are they hiding this shit? Literally. And that's no actually thing. the neighbor's house. I trained him to do that. <laughs> so Lily! the joke's on him. <laughs> now, this is not a dog. I think someone was confused. Oh. They maybe thought it was a dog. Oh, is this guy lost? He's missing his home? Yeah, Come here, player. little guy. Come here, boy. Come here. It's cold, I know. You're freezing. You got a lot of fur, though. Ow, motherfucker. <laughs> Son of a bitch got me. No, that's not a dog. That's a dog. Oh, God damn coyote. God damn coyote. God damn. I don't, I can't, this Ow, is a bit like the gator stuff. I'm not me. sure it's the coyote's fault. Ow. It's not. Damn he got me. I was just standing here. I was just innocently putting my hand out, waving him over. Come on, people. Be smarter. Be smarter. What's the no. upside if the coyote does? Like you're going to pet this? Yeah, so you're just yeah, going to pet. You bring that home so it can bite you your wife? Be, what are you doing? Well, you must be freezing cold out here. Come here, boy. Oh, here you are. Now what? Um, Please. See you later. Oh. Now, Rhett was over at Razor's house. You know, they share the uh, backyard fence, Dino. And I think... They share uh, a lot, Ryan. In Mr. Razor's neighborhood, they've got a golf simulator. And uh, here he is working on his game. Course is about to open. Thirty-six point six yards. One broken penis. <laughs> <laughs> now is that a slice or a hook? That'd be That's sliced. a shank. That is a, okay, what we call yeah, a shank. Right. Yeah. A little upright. He's, yeah. He's got a little, um, he kept his uh, one eye on the ball. Jeez. Um, Rhett and his buddies when they were traveling around the world. <laughs> Got down to Central America. It looks like you were riding donkeys or a horse or something. <laughs> An old glue stick gets a little scared here. That's the animal. Huh? Hang on now. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, oh. That's a oh. <laughs> oh. Whew. Well, Rhett, I hope you didn't uh, shatter your pelvis when that horse slash donkey landed on you. Yeah, that's donkey-ish, eh? That's a that's pretty donkey. Oh, oh. that's no no good at all. Mm. Ah. Now, are we going down under now, or do we have one more thing before down under? I'm trying to remember where we're at. I think we're going down under. Down under. And uh, look. It's a little weird at first, Dean, but the more videos we see, the more we understand the Aussie male, and the more time you spend in Australia, the more you turn into one. Case in point, this is, I believe, is a North American that went and traveled to Australia. This is my voice one day in Australia. Hey, mate, this is my voice one week in Australia. No dramas. How you going, you cheeky cunt? This is my fucking voice one week in Australia. Oi, Jono, check out this fucking cunt, eh? What the fuck you do, you dog cunt? You look like a shit cunt with that haircut, eh? You gotta get a bit of fade, mate, if you wanna pick up the shields, mate. All right, best time to head to the beach is Ivo, but don't forget to stop by the bottle or pick up a few beverinos, you fucking bogan. All right, yeah, nah, yeah, no worries, no dramas, mate, yeah. Hey, anybody got a ciggy? My mouth is fucking dry from all the heaps of lollies earlier. Oh, God. It happens, it happens quick. fast. Wow. That's like a week. Red, how long were you there? A month. Wow. Potty mouth. Jeez. Uh, they got crocodiles there. Mm. Sorry, Dean. Now, this guy we've met. Uh, Tarzan. 
Remember the guy that was pulling the logs out of the, uh, the little swamp there the other day? Yeah, He's yeah. Calmly guided the croc away. Mm-hmm. He uh, is a, a very famous um, nature dude. Not unlike Steve Irwin, got a family, super hot wife, and all these uh, crocodiles in the Northern Territory. One of them's called Tripod. He's missing a leg. Uh, He's got another one that's, I think he's called Tarzan, and they're going to feed the crocs here. It's the wet season, lots of water, and he's he's trying to help these crocs heal from their injuries. Okay, you can see Tarzan here. He can smell that pig just up there, a couple of fresh pigs. Whoa, there he is. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Whoa, 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 dude, gate there. Oh, no. What happened there? Uh oh. Right, Tarzan's out. Tarzan's out. This is a problem. All right, mate, what are we going to do now? All right, Tarzan has got out of the pen. He can smell the pig. He's starving. All right, let's get him a feed and get him back in. I mean, it just doesn't stop. This guy's Instagram reels about a thousand videos of him. Like, just it's like he's like breeding puppies, but they're all like two thousand pound dinosaurs that eat things. It's incredible. Let's go to the what next the one. Wife? What do we got? Do you have something there, Red? Uh, what about comment? the wife? You mentioned the yeah, wife. What happened, Ben? With the cat tail on the cage. <laughs> Look at the size of these things. Goodness. Oh. A lot of crocodiles. Is that real? I don't know if they're trying to like clear the pathway for boats or whatever, but the crocs are right in there. Golf balls? What are we getting there? What are we doing? I'm trying to get fellas. Look at this. Monster. Um got a snake today? Just one though, Dean? Just one. Don't even know if it's that big. Not nearly as big as yesterday's. This is not in your car. Oh, look out of the water. Cute little guy, hey? Aw. Oh, look, see? Ah! <laughs> you had to do that. Come I on. Be, I would not be happy. Oh, well, friends. I wouldn't be in there to begin with. I was going to say, what are they doing? That water looks like poo water. Yeah, they're on. Maybe they're bogans, Rhett. It's the just take it. Have a season. I don't know. He looks in control here. He's not too scared of the snake. That's a good start. Oh. And finally, uh, I'm a little embarrassed, guys. Had a bit to drink. Made a few mistakes and uh, ended up on camera. So. This is me getting chased out of an establishment uh, earlier this week. I didn't do anything. Oh, yo. Start going. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Ryan. You need to play a little defense there at some point. Well, I just needed a puff. I figured... If I'm going down, not without a head rush. See, ordinarily, you can just kind of be fun, love, and party guy, yeah. and people just kind of leave you alone. Not all the time. Look at my jacket. How is that not fun? That's, yeah, very Gosh. 80s night. <sighs> anyway, playing hurt, as we all do. The good ones, Rhett. That's your pinned report on a Thursday. Village Honda, huge selection of pre-owned vehicles, all makes, all models, all budgets. With over 90 units on-site, access to over 500 more in the dealership group, make Village Honda your one-stop automotive destination in Calgary. They're worth the trip. Village Honda, located in the Northwest Auto Mall. They know what you do with this segment, right? What oh, they're wearing, yeah. Uh, yeah. Flames play tonight. Vegas is this. The Flames sign the guy. Now snakes. Ladders. Kangaroos. Right. People go. saying cunt. You got to change your algorithm some way, somehow. <laughs> I can't get a good look at Dean. Maybe we go to full screen here, Jack. I don't know. What do you think? No, we don't need a full screen. What are you doing? All right. Just a few more things. I actually had a... Uh, it, it, I don't know how I knew that you would have crocodile videos, but I thought I'd take a stab at it and take on the off chance there might be a croc video mm-hmm. in uh, the Pinder report today. I saw right. this fact come up. Uh, 
if you are chased by a crocodile, they are fast on their feet, but cannot turn very well. So if one is chasing you, run in zigzag lines. All right. That's kind of what the bunny rabbits do. You notice that? They're like, hey, 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 hey. Which I mean, yeah, I can see that. The crocodiles are low to the ground. Hey, they can come get you, but probably it's the uh, right turn, uh, left turn. Good to know. Good to know. I feel like they're not really chasing people so much as people are taunting them and putting their hands in their mouths. Yeah, it's really I, I more of the videos we're watching here. They're probably just laying there. They've just had a, a, a yummy gazelle or something. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Oh, I had too much to eat. <laughs> oh, I am so packed. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do much the rest of the day, but just lie here. Oh, my God. I'm sending you this guy's Instagram, the, the crocodile guy. This is He's next level. He's Steve Irwin 2.0. It's unbelievable. Well, let's see what this guy over here is doing. Let me see if I can stick my hand in his fucking mouth. I'm going to have to kill this son of a bitch now. I'm so full. This I just I just ate. <laughs> All right, asshole. Come here. A uh, couple of things. Uh, Retro, do you have a Snuggie? Oh, I don't, but I want one. Nightshirt? Well, Wendy's has something even better for you. Come on. It's not the Snuggie. Oh, it's, yeah. oh my it's God. The nuggie. What are you yeah, talking about shut here? the front door. Wendy's. Oh. Is, they want to they wanna hook. Be one of the, ex, you want to be one of the exclusive few to bring home a Nuggie? Look at this. The all white fleece interior. That looks cozy, Dean. Hey, doesn't that look cozy? Yeah, but what the if I'm hungry? The breaded exterior, as you would see on a, one of those delicious nuggets. You got the quick order QR code no on the sleeve way. so you can go right. Come boop. On. Right Are to the you Wendy's serious? app and the, the coup de gras, the insulated pocket for your six pack of nugs. Jeez. And that's on top of the bunny hug hole. Like the, the, you can put your hands yes, under there. Follow God. Wendy's Canada on TikTok right now. Check in daily at 1 49 PM between now and well, the 15th is tomorrow. So it's kind of limited time here to see how you could get your own nuggy. Then grab a six piece of nuggets for just three forty nine to celebrate. Terms and conditions apply. Goodness! Now, Look did the shoveler get to keep that? I see she's modeling the outfit. That's kind oh, of her Wendy. Job. Wendy knows what she's doing here. Yeah. This yep. is brilliant. They yeah, are good. Marino would definitely. That's perfect for a Bills game, isn't it? I'm starving now. The nuggy. You could do the Betway bets if you want, I suppose. Did I have anything else? What else did I have there? I had the trap, the auger, croc. Crocodile yeah, that's enough. Straight. The game. Yeah, that's probably enough. That's probably enough pertinent and relevant sporting info for On the this day. sports show. The crocodiles yeah. can't run straight, and Wendy's is making merchandise. Uh, while we talk about this and this is just kind of coming in here and thanks to uh, Jack for finding this, uh, we, the, the show is growing. We're having, we're getting more and more listeners that are downloading mm. the podcast. More and more people are watching live. We're very fortunate. We thank you for that. Our numbers are, are on the climb and that is great. And we do appreciate it. But the one other thing that'll happen is if somebody word of mouth, maybe you turned it on leading up to the Tanev trade or the Hannafin trade or, mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. And then I'm going to maybe need to start watch this show or, Get, get, get to what what this show is about. Uh, here's Jerry, new to the show. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I think he he logged in right when we had the microwave guy on the motorcycle. Look at the photo. <laughs> no. Well, that's Jerry. It's Jay. Hey, Jerry. My boy, Jerry. What's up, Jerry? What's up, Jerry? My boy, Jerry. My boy, Jerry. Jerry. Back no, we're not Jeff. To to answer your question, we're not really sure. It's this. This I'll is say it. this. I'm at a point in my life where I talk about the power play oh. or talk about Archie Comics and Kenny G slaying P and whatever else we talked about today. GTAs and GTOs and STDs. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm falling. It is what it is. 17 it's, games left. It's not for everyone, folks. A lot of it. 17, 17. 
could really use a dirty hit and a suspension conversation right about now. No, 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 no. This is the best. This is the best show we've ever done. Uh, let's do our Betway bets. Get that Betway app. And here's the thing. With Betway, you can get a free bet of up to $200 if your first bet loses. Create a new content, or a new account, scan the QR code on your screen, and then redeem the bonus. We'll get that QR code for you. Place a bet, no minimum amount required. And if that bet loses, you'll get a refund of up to $200. You can then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. This offer only available outside mm -hmm. of Ontario. So there it is. Hammer that QR code, get your new account, and you got up to $200 there that if you if your first bet doesn't come through, hey, they're going to top you up. How about it? Love it. Bet the responsible way with Betway. Here's what I got for you. Vegas in town to play the Flames. A uh, One of the pre-made bets on the Betway app. A Vegas Moneyline win. And Jack Eichel to get one point. Yankel! Plus 110. Plus money. I'll take it. And it is tradition. A former flame comes back to play the flames. Uh, this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a reach. Hey, it's called big game hunting, Dean. Noah Hannafin back in town. You may, you may not know this, but he is a former flame. That's right. Who now plays for the Vegas Golden Knights. Anytime goal for Noah plus 400. Uh, we're going to hit it because Dean, I think you're crazy. It's tradition. Because on my picks today, you'd never I, do that, right? I also have the Noah Hannafin oh, yeah, goal right. that plays plus four hundred, and I got Vegas winning by a goal and a half. They are feeling good. They erased that deficit in Seattle to come back and win, tie it with an empty net in the final minute, win an OT. Boys, you're feeling good. Flames a little shell shocked. New decor. Vegas minus one and a half. That's the puck line. Pays plus one fifty. You know, you know what it is? Is we're sticklers for tradition. Well, we just, there's certain things, right? Like yeah. Matthew Phillips had one goal in the NHL this season. We all knew who that was going to be against. Yeah. Calgary Flames. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so there you go. With Betway, you can get that free bet up to $200 if your first bet loses. So you create the new account, place your bet, scan that QR code first on the, on the screen, and then redeem your bonus. You place that bet, the bet loses, you get the refund of up to $200 to then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. Offer Love it. only available... Outside of Ontario, bet the responsible way with Betway. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, yeah. in. Uh, Boomer, can I ask you a quick question? We don't do questions. No questions no. on the show. Uh, thanks for that, Noah. But not Mail it tomorrow. Uh, you can have... send, you, uh, you can submit your question, which may be selected or not, on the Great Clips inbox. Mm. Great Clips inbox at flamesnation.ca. We get all the emails, and then on the show tomorrow, we'll answer them. Correctly, incorrectly, vague responses, just disregard perhaps, them. or just cool. ignore them all together. Yeah, totally. Great clips. It's going to be great. Again, the uh, email address, great clips inbox at flamesnation.ca. Uh, Tomorrow. Boom. Question for you. Why don't no, you take questions? I can't, can't take that question right now. We're not taking questions. Sorry about that. Sorry. Tomorrow. Great clips Tomorrow. inbox. Twelve games in the NHL tonight. I bet you that's where we're going for uh oh, for Nordash. Bet you just guess. We got some good races. Remember two years ago we had the uh it was like, oh, all the teams in the east at Christmas, those are the teams. Huh? Not this year, friend. Not this year. Good ones. Restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more DoorDash really has everything you need. It's easy. You know how this is done. Download the DoorDash app. And for a limited time, you will get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download that app and put in promo code NATION25, NATION25, to trigger that deal. What's on the menu for DoorDash? Well, we got some bangers tonight. There might not be a better game in the Chell than Florida at Carolina. Hurricanes just lost a tight one on Broadway to the Rangers. Florida's look great. Top team in the NHL. Five o'clock okay, start there. Carolina, Can't the, Carolina, the Hurricanes, slight okay, favorites Carolina. at home. Yeah. Was that Shaggy? Carolina. How about a bird? It was, was a that, me. Ah. Or was it Kenny G? Kenny P. 
Um, because I got high. That was not Shaggy. Because I got high. Because I got high. We're very high. We're high. Tampa Bay at New York. They're on Broadway. They've had a few playoff series last decade. These two good teams. Tampa favored on the road. That's a little odd against the Ranger. Huh? Shostak, it's been great, boys. Boston at Montreal. Always good when these two original sixes get together. That's five o'clock start. Habs will be in Calgary on Saturday. They're hosting tonight before they make their way west. And Vegas, Calgary, seven o'clock at the Dome. Vegas, minus 170. Big favorites. Uh, Pinders over under for Dutton's beers. The line set at four and a half. Over or under? That's insane. That's what's on the menu. If you're on Betway, you're not losing that bet. (laughs) The over is just the safest bet in town. And as a welcome bonus, you get to bet over Pinder on four and a half beers, and we will double your money. With Double Dash on DoorDash, you can order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery without additional delivery fees. Everyone gets what they want and need with DoorDash. And yes, Nation25 is the promo code to get 25% off your first order and zero delivery fees. Dash that for the win with DoorDash. Bam. DoorDash. Yeah. Good show today, man. What was your favorite part? Not you... Drop doing it. what you do doesn't like it you don't like the crocodiles it's the no. other c's that you do oh someone else said it eight times and i say it once get out of here it's it's a direct reflection of you sir smart dean can, dean can talk about getting an std and a gto but i can't say see you next tuesday is that what but you I'm said see you next Off-air tuesday conversations jack hit the to go button are you in australia <laughs> Hit the QR code. I need to go. <laughs> Rhett's got to go back to the can. A post show dump. It's amazing. This is the show I want to do. Give me flames. What? Bristol? I've got great news good. for you. Next September, we'll talk to there's, there's a lot of these left. <laughs> three three year deal for the. Uh, how much? How much action was Kenny G getting in the day? That's what people want to know, right? That wasn't a three-year deal. That was like three decades. That guy slayed. All right, fellas. Appreciate your support. The sponsors. And Dean, good luck this weekend. Oh, yeah. Go get it. Go Go out on top. If you're going to hang up those pads and quit at the one thing that you're good at, go out on top. Yeah. We've got, uh, we had to get costumes and hats. Oh, yeah. You're, can't we have that for this? Like, I want you to costume some days. I'm not wearing a costume. The girls are go- going to be wearing costumes or something. I guess that's what you do. I don't be know. supportive, Dean. Get a costume. Show up. Get a get a some sort of wind instrument that. You yeah. Can. What was that thing called? That the key yeah. the keyboard in your mouth. A uh, harps um, harpsichord. Yeah. No. Some, Melodica, 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 or something. was it? Yeah, more of a flautist, to be quite honest. Well, then, go ahead. Uh, that'll do it. See you, buddies. See you tomorrow.